dear students i welcome you all in today's topic that is political parties its meaning and its significance the objectives of today's lecture are to understand the concept of party and its types to understand the importance of political parties in democracy let us start with the meaning definition and emergence of political parties the political party in its rudimentary sense arose in great britain Britain's transition to more representative government following the glorious revolution of 1688 to 89 exposed the divisions within the society. The most poignant example is the conflict between the Whigs and Tories. Political parties emerged in the 1670s and 80s during the exclusion crisis. The Whigs favored excluding James Stuart from the throne. because of his catholicism and views on the monarchy the tories formed to oppose exclusion because it represented too great an incursion into royal authority after the glorious revolution the whigs and tories were engaged in a frequent and close struggle for control over the house of commons during the rage of party between 1690 and 1740 There were ten elections, and the majority party in the Commons changed six times. Party conflict was fueled by differences in economic and social interests. The Tories represented a significant portion of the land-owning interest, and on the national issues, they protected the interests of the Church of England and favoured lower taxes. The Whigs generally represented larger landowners and financial interests. they favored religious tolerance for dissenters from the church of england and an aggressive foreign policy supported by well funded army the two parties also differed in leadership the tories best known leader was robert harley who served as lord treasurer from 1711 to 1714 the whigs and tories were the first political parties with their share of treasury benches and the opposition politics assumed the form of a dual system however after the glorious revolution of 1689 the predominance of whigs increased phenomenally and great britain became a one party dominant system later the whigs transformed themselves into a liberal party in the 19th century which culminated in the prime ministership of william gladstone while the tories became the conservative culminating in the prime ministership of benjamin disraeli the early party system led to institutionalization of liberal democracy with the enactment of habeas corpus act of 1679 this act was largely the work of lord ashley the earl of shaftesbury and the founder of the whigs party in 1681 all modern democracies have provisions for habeas corpus a writ issued to bring a person who has to be detained into court usually to see whether the decision is lawful in their constitutions in the 19th century the unionists grew out of the tory party to protect the interests of country gentry and the merchant class the name conservative party has been used since 1830 its nickname tory continues even today after the reform act of 1832 the whig party changed itself into the liberal party championing electoral parliamentary and philanthropic reforms as a consequence of the widening franchise brought about by the 1832 act the middle class entered the otherwise aristocratic whig party by 1839 the label liberal party has begun to be used and the first liberal government was formed in 1868 the liberal party disintegrated in the 1880s mainly because of its inability to solve the irish question and with the consolidation of franchise for the working class the labor party emerged as the dominant party in 1901 replacing the liberals however the liberal party still continues in great britain and after merging with the social democratic party in 1988 it's now called as the social and liberal democratic party political party is a group of people who come together to contest elections and hold power in government it's a way to mobilize voters to support common sets of interests concerns and goals the primary role of the political party is to fix the political agenda and policies 
So each party tries to persuade people by claiming their policies are better than those of the other. In a broader perspective, a political party is a means through which the people can speak to the government and have a say in the governance of the country. So every political party must have three main components. The leaders, the active members and the followers. Parties are endemic to democracy, yet their number, degree of institutionalization and structure vary enormously from continent to continent and from country to country. The size of a party system, cleavages and identities are politicized which have profound normative implications. If parties convey the preferences, opinions and interests of constituencies to government, then the expression of societal interests or their suppression via the party system will critically influence the quality of democracy. The presence of political party is actually a healthy situation for the nation. It gives people a choice to make a more evolved and effective decision. Moreover, it drives the other political parties to get better than their competitors to win elections and rule the nation. So, this is the basic backdrop of political parties. According to Haywood, I quote, a political party is a group of people that is organized for the purpose of winning government power by electoral or other means. Parties are often confused with interest groups. Haywood identifies four characteristics that distinguishes parties from other organized groups. He believes that political parties aims to exercise government power by winning political offices. Edmund Burke defines and I quote, Party is a body of men united for promoting by their joint endeavors the national interests upon some particular principle in which they all are agreed. Newman defines and I quote, political party as the articulate organization of society's active political agents, those who are concerned with the control of governmental power and who compete for popular support with another group or groups holding divergent views. As such, it's a great intermediary which links social force and ideologies to official governmental institutions and relates them to political action within the larger political community. While defining political party, La Polembara and Wiener points out that when we speak of a political party, we do not mean a loosely knit group of notables with limited and intermittent relationship to local counterparts. Our definition requires instead First requirement is continuity in organization that is an organization whose expected lifespan is not dependent on the lifespan of current leaders. Second requirement manifest and presumably permanent organization at local level with regularized communications and other relationships between local and national units. Third self-conscious determination of leaders at both national and local levels to capture and to hold the decision-making power alone or in collation with others, not simply to influence to exercise of power. And fourth, a concern on the part of organization for seeking followers at the polls in some manner striving for political support. While considering political party from behavior point of view, Professor Samuel J. defines it as social group engaged in patterned activity within the social matrix. He further says, when interpreted as in social organism, the party possesses a role playing individual within an identifiable social unit, perceiving and attempting to achieve specific goals. According to him, and I quote, a party is also a polity or miniature political system within an authority structure, patterns of power distribution, a representative process and electoral and decision making system. Lord Bryce had stated that no free large country has been without them. No one has shown how representative government could be worked without them. They bring order out of chaos of a multitude of voters. If parties cause some evils, they avert and mitigate others. Political parties may not be provided for in a country's constitution, yet they shine on the political horizon of the state. Parties alone link the profile with the legislature and the executive. Actually, the nature of any political system largely depends on the features of its party system. 
According to R. Bassett, the working of any system of representative government is in large measure determined by the nature of the political parties which separates it. There are other eminent scholars who have said more or less the same thing in their own words. For example, R. M. McIver defined a party as an association organized in support of some principle or policy which by constitutional means endeavors to make the determinant of government. And R. N. Gilchrist had written that a political party may be defined as an organized group of citizens who profess to share the same political views and who by acting as a political unit try to control the government. Here, it must be emphasized that to be a successful party, its members must generally share the same political views so that they may act as a single political unit. After going through all the definitions of these theorists and thinkers which have been mentioned above, we can simply say that political party is an organized group of people with at least a set of similar political goals and ideas and in order to achieve these desired goals and ideals, party try to gather the support of common masses through democratic means or through other means, whatever the political setup of the place may be. Their primary objective is to make their own members occupy powerful places as public representatives and ministers in the parliament. Now dear students, let us discuss the importance or significance of political parties. The importance of political parties cannot be overstated. The operation of the whole governmental apparatus is dependent on them. The presence of political parties in any nation is one of the good makers of successful democratic transition. The reality is that democracy is impossible to imagine in the absence of political parties. They are the driving force behind the everything that government does. A democracy cannot work without the presence of political party. This is clear from the functions of the political parties. In case if there are no political parties, then every candidate in the election would be independent candidate. Any individual candidate does not have the efficiency to promise any major policy to the people. In such scenario, no one will be responsible for the administration of a country. In the long run, only a representative democracy can survive. Political parties are the agencies that gather different views on various issues and present them to the government. Here are some points enlisted which discusses the significance or importance of political parties. First one is, political parties help in the formulation of public opinion. Political parties enhances the chances of people to be more focused and vocal about their problems. The leader of the political parties have very strong impact on the people. The political parties undertake many constructive programs and delivers impressive speeches and conducts different events so as to propagate their ideology. In this way, political parties develop and strengthen public opinion. Second one is an instrument of political socialization political modernization and socio-economic development. Political parties help in political socialization of masses and thus become the instrument of political modernization. The political parties therefore strive to maintain and strengthen the structure of democratic norms and values to secure maximum community mobilization for social and economic development to shape the government provide the main link among different social and economic groups, constitute the chief agency for political education and socialization, and break down traditional behavior. They have therefore induced both political, social, and economic development in newly emerging democracies. Third one is policy formulations. Political parties are not policy-making organizations in themselves. They certainly take position on important policy questions, especially provide alternatives to the party which is in power. When in power, a political party attempts to put its philosophy in a practice through legislation. If a party wins office by large, majority it may mean the voters have given their mandate to carry out the programs outlined in their manifestos and campaigns. Fourth one is, to provide a link between the government and the people. Political parties seek to educate, instruct and activate the electorate. They use the mass media and local organization 
to maintain the contact between the relatively political inactive masses and lead them to the awareness and acceptance of various policies. They seek to mobilize the population. The parties run the electoral processes which is relatively selective mechanism for public service. Moreover, party membership is the most widely used door to power and position. Fifth one is, it provides an alternative and stability to the government. In a parliamentary form of government, political party acts as the conductor of government when it returns to power. It acts as critics of government if it's not in a majority in the legislature. In other words, the majority party in the house assumes the responsibility of conductor of government. Minority parties, on the other hand, acts as the role of opposition. In constitutional crisis, the minority party may provide government if it is asked to do so. Thus, political parties in parliamentary democracy provide much needed stability to the political system. Sixth one is social welfare function. Political parties in recent times perform social welfare functions. They work for the alleviation of the suffering of the people during the days of famine, drought, epidemic, wars, etc. Parties also work for the eradication of social evils like illiteracy, superstitions, untouchability, communalism, etc. Seventh one is the instrument of nation building. Political parties have made significant contribution towards the building of new nation in some of the countries, including developing nations also. In their pursuit of national and democratic principles, the parties have organized themselves, ignoring ethnic, subcultural, subracial, local, regional and religious boundaries. Next one is to provide political education to the masses as well as widen the political participation. The masses in general are indifferent and apathetic towards the business of government. But if this ignorance of the masses allowed to continue, the popularity of government would decline and it would meet a tragic end. The increasing propaganda and activities carried on by the political parties in favor of their candidates and against the candidates and programs of the opposition therefore proves highly informative to an average voter. The political parties thus arose a public spirit and prompted the masses to take active interest in public affairs and keep them vigilant and awakened about governmental activities, programs and policies. In short, political parties make the people to realize that they are the masters of their own destiny and therefore exercise their judgment freely and openly. Political parties by presenting, defining and clarifying the issues for the electorates, setting values and goals for the society not only to increase the scope of political activities but also widen the possibilities of greater popular participation in political activities. Next one is the political recruitment function. The political parties perform the political recruitment functions. They recruit both leaders and the cadres. While leaders run the government or perform the opposition role, the cadres are instrumental for day-to-day -day contact between the people and the parties. According to James Bryce, and I quote, the chief thing of the American political parties is the selection of the candidates. There is hardly a person who today attains high public office without belonging to or at least without being supported by a political party. This is very important in communist totalitarian regimes where party provides the only avenue to political power. It's also significant in competitive party system in which the main source of political recruitment is through political parties. In a democratic political system, apart from representatives in the legislature, the political parties offer their candidates for various other important public functionaries like president, vice president, governor, judge of lower court, etc., where they are to be elected. Next one is to serve as coordinating factor between the executive and the legislature. In presidential form of political system, which is based on the theory of separation of powers, political parties serve as coordinating factors between the executive and legislature. 
the domination of the legislature by the same party which controls the executive may create a degree of harmony between the executive and legislature which the presidential system itself is incapable of realizing otherwise. Dear students, now let us talk about the challenge faced by the political parties. Lack of internal democracy within parties is the first challenge. Across the globe, one can see that there is a growing concentration of power in the hands of few or just one leader. On what transpires inside the party, ordinary members of the party do not get sufficient information. Ordinary members are unable to influence decisions as they lack sufficient connections. Decisions are taken in the name of party by the leaders having more power. Parties do not conduct internal regular elections, organizational meetings are not conducted and do not maintain a register of the membership. Since too much of power is wielded by few leaders in the party, those who disagree with the leadership are unable to continue working in the party. Personal loyalty to the leader becomes more important than the loyalty to party policies and principles. Due to the system of succession due to dynasty in the political parties, ordinary and handworking party members are unable to rise to the top. Relatives or people close to the leaders of the party are given favors which are unfair to the other party workers. A transparent and an open system of functioning is not followed by political parties which prevents deserving party members from rising to the top. Members of just one family hold complete control in many parties. This is not fair to other members of that party. Hence, people who do not have popular support or adequate experience get the position of power which is unhealthy for a democracy. The other important challenge is during elections, there is a rising role of muscle power and money power in political parties. Candidates who can raise lots of money or those who have lots of money are usually nominated by the political parties. Political parties have supported money criminals for contesting elections. Shortcuts are used to win elections since parties' sole focus is on winning elections. Decisions and policies of the political parties are usually influenced by organizations or rich people who give funds to the party. Across the globe, Due to a decline in the ideological differences among political parties, there is no significant difference, thereby reducing choice to the voters. Not giving meaningful choice to the voters is the fourth challenge that is often faced by the political parties. Now, dear students, let's conclude today's lecture. In the political process of any democratic system, the party is an essential political agency. The first and foremost aim of each political party is to prevail over others in order to get into power or to stay in it. Thus, it is for the attainment of political power that parties strive and subsequently distinguish from other groups. The political party in this modern age is a key to political power in both the open and closed system by the means which society provides. This was all for today's lecture. I hope you all have enjoyed. Thank you.